Hello, hello. Sound test. Can you hear me? Can someone hear me? Yes, that's cool. Okay, so hello and welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Roland and I'm happy to be your guest for this session. Um, this is an ongoing work from my previous sessions. So that's the reason why we have here session 11. And the topic for today is attribute paste access control with Node.js. But before we start, let, let's, uh, let me say thank you uh, to the sponsor of this session. That's the company, it's called Summary Looks Development. And that's established, the company is established in Austria and is um, very well established also in the field of cloud and uh, blockchain technologies. And I would like to say also thank you to Daniel from Hyperledger Budapest, which um, was helping me to promote the session, and also David from the Hyperledger community. Uh, I think he's the community manager. So thank you for that. And now let's start with the session. And um, at the beginning, I would like to give you a short overview of what we are going to do in the next hour. So this is my first session with this Crowdcast uh, software. And uh, I think it's a pretty cool tool. And uh, But I'm not so familiar with this tool. I hope everything will work fine. And from your side also that you are able to handle the tool because it's a little bit different to ask questions. Um, as we have done it in the last sessions with the Zoom meeting. So, and that's the reason why I've put together a, a slide with the meeting rules uh, so that you know how you can ask questions and so on. And then I would like to come to the topic. So I would like to introduce the topic and the, la the lab overview. So this is a um, uh, semi hands-on session because of the time. So um, everything is prepared and I will uh, walk through the source code and we can test the source code. And it's not the live coding because it would take too much time and uh, we will not be ready within the uh, one hour for this session. And yeah, so short overview, what we are going to do and what, what we need for the setup, for the lab setup. And then um, I will focus a little bit on the relevant um, aspects from the uh, Fabric uh, contract API, which methods we need so that we have a little bit theoretical background that we see which functions we need uh, to do our uh, example for. And then I will give you an overview uh, of the lab environment finally. And in the hands-on, so we will first register um, identities because we have here, so we need the uh, fabric CA identities and we have to enroll some identities and uh, how you can do this with the command line interface. I will show you that. And then, yeah, we will develop the chain code and see how this is, how this could be done. And, but we will see it uh, in the in a um, ready version, so because it's not enough time to do this in a live coding session. And then we are going to use it with the CLI commands. And then in the end, so I have a challenge of the day for you. So if somebody wants to uh, accept this challenge, uh, then uh, it I think it's um, great practice for everyone who is listening who is listening to this session. And uh, but later uh, we will see more on that topic. Uh, here you will find the references. I have posted also the um, support material and the uh, slides here in, on my blog. So the link is in the chat, so you can download this. Uh, from the site, and here you find a little bit more detailed links. So here to the GitHub repository from this session, the support material, and here free links 
which are useful because uh, here fabric links are uh, at all useful to read this. We are going, we are use fabric 2.2 version here and uh, then the fabric chain code uh, API. So it's also important to know uh, where is the documentation and uh, what can I find in, in the documentation and how I can use this uh, to improve my chain code. And then um, a link to the Fabric CA because uh, we are going to use Fabric CA in this session to register and enroll some identities. So short meeting rules. Um, this session uh, will take one hour uh, and then we will have 15 minutes Q&A. And if you have a question, then Crowdcast uh, gives us a good uh, tool for that. Uh, when you look uh, a little bit uh, on the bottom of your screen, then you will find the button ask a question. And uh, when you click on this ask a question button, then you can um, write a question on. And the cool thing is other users can see this question and can vote for this question. So in this Q&A, I will go through these uh, questions and then we will see uh, which questions have the highest weight. And uh, in this order, we are going to answer these questions. Yeah, you can use the chat for, for some comments or you write down. So, but it's a little bit difficult for me to do the presentation and uh, read the chat. Uh, and because that's the reason also why uh, the ask the question button is a really good, a really nice feature from Crowdcast. And um, yeah, the recording will be available uh, under the same meeting link. So the session is recorded. And when the session is closed here, then the recording uh, will be immediately uh, available under the same uh, link uh, as you have used for this live session. Yeah, and the slides in the source files are av available from my blog. And uh, in the slides, you find the link to the GitHub repo. And on the GitHub repo, on the first page of the GitHub repo, you see um, the dates from the 10 uh, sessions before. And then you can find also the documentation and the topics. So maybe for today, when you want to reproduce this example, you will need some information to develop the uh, development network, to set up development, your development network. And uh, this is uh, an example we have, uh, I have shown in the last um, sessions uh, with the Docker files and also with the binary files. So you can choose which path you would like and then uh, you can try it. Okay, so um, the topic for today is um, attribute-based, uh, attribute-based chain code control and uh, access control, attribute-based access control. And uh, when we come to the topic, uh, then we have to think about um, how we can go a little bit deeper, how we see this topic in a wider view and uh, how we can sort this topic uh, in. And uh, I have tried, I tried a completely new approach here. So I try to define these topics uh, between uh, something you can define on the channel and something you can define within the chain code. So we, and uh, these are both parts where the permissions are came from. And uh, when, we, when we look at Fabric and when we try to install it, then the first what we will hear and see uh, is sometimes the so-called endorsement policy. So Hyperledger Fabric takes um, a lot of uh, usage of policies and the endorsement policies, these are also something uh, which is found in the literature under the name chain code level endorsement. So, uh, but in simple words, the endorsement policy here is uh, you have to define it uh, on the channel and all channel members have to agree uh, to that policy. And this policy uh, rules um, the way how a transaction is valid. So you can say, every organizations must agree with the transactions or two organizations must agree or the majority of an organization must agree and so on. So, and this is something uh, where you can 
control permissions. So, and uh, this is but defined on the channel. And then you can, and it's a global statement, I think, a global configuration for the whole consortium network. And then you can say, okay, we will have something uh, in a private state. And uh, that's a little bit curious. Uh, when you say uh, Hyperledger Fabric is not a public blockchain system, it is a private blockchain system, but we have a public state here and we can have a private state here. And that means that public means in this context that everything is public uh, inside of the consortium. So it's not visible to the public, uh, but it is visible to the uh, consortium and all organizations and members of the consortium. But in this network, we can have something private. And uh, this could be done with the so-called private data collections. And uh, these private data collections is a configuration which can override this global endorsement policy settings. And is also done uh, in, with the definition on the channel. And uh, it's also called a key collection level endorsement. So you find different uh, terms for different, uh, uh, or, or better, you find different terms for the same uh, in the documentation. And I try here also to collect this and uh, bring this all uh, to, a, uh, to, a set, to the same level. And this is something, uh, private data collections, uh, where we can uh, control the access and limit the access to a certain group of members. And then we have something that's called the state-based endorsement. And the state-based endorsement uh, allows some, somebody uh, to reduce uh, the permissions of a, of a key, of an asset. Um, and then you can say, this is a, this is a endorsement for specific keys. And uh, you find also the term key level endorsement. And the typical example for that is when you have something like an asset, which is owned by a certain organization, and uh, only this organization can change uh, the ownership or some attributes of this asset. And with this state-based endorsement, you can say, okay, uh, when a, a certain condition happens, then you can change this state-based endorsement. And this will also override the global endorsement policies here. And this is also a term you find is called the key level endorsement. And, um, but all these topics here uh, are not part of the session, uh, but, sorry, uh, but it's important to know you can define this on the channel. So this is something defined on the channel and here by the state-based endorsement, um, you start this, you start doing on the um, chain code. And the topic today is this attribute paste access control, and this is defined within the chain code. And for this attribute-based access control, we need the designing third of the particular client. And the client could be, in this context, will be a user, and this user runs the client application. This is a Node.js application, for example, and this makes the communication uh, with the uh, network and with the blockchain system itself. And uh, this certificates, this five, this is an um, um, designing cert, is a certificate and in this certificate, you can set some attributes and you can set these attributes um, according to your needs and according to your use case. And then you can, access this and yeah you can uh, control this from the chain code and we will see later on the next slide which attributes we can uh, read from the uh, chain from the certificate and then we can make decisions so you can make a simple control decision with an if else statement for example and then you can say if this certificate belongs to membership service provider 
ID number uh, one or organization one, then you can act, you can access this function in the in the chain code, um, and all other organization cannot. So, uh, but you have a lot of uh, flexibility in this system. So we can we will see we can uh, set any kind of information and any kind any kind of value and then you can create the system uh, really for your need and the aim of this lab is that we are going to test uh, with the with the development network and in a development network we have one organization and in this organization we try to create two different roles so we try to create a role for the creating and update an asset and then another role for reading uh, those assets and uh, when we start the system we will have by default two identities so we have an admin identity and we have a so-called user one identity and um, then we will see both of these identities uh, will not be able to create and update this asset and also not read this asset because our chain code uh, will control this. And uh, this is the aim from this lab, to show you how you can create uh, such certificates, what is the important part by these certificates, uh, where you can find these cert this certificates, how you can change these certificates, and then what is needed in the chain code to evaluate this uh, certificate and uh, grab the values from the certificate and uh, make a decision uh, on that. Uh, and then you can uh, program whatever you want. And yeah, the steps to go uh, for that. So the first thing is we need the network. So um, when we try to go a little bit away from the network, from the test network, for example. I think, uh, I hope every, everybody of you know the test network and have tried a and have played a little bit with this test network. And uh, then when you try uh, to do your own steps, then it's a little bit difficult to do that because in this test network, you always have the whole approved process for the installation of a chain code. Because in the Fabric 2.2 version, we have a new uh, system. This is a life cycle endorsement uh, policy and uh, life cycle endorsement management so that you can uh, install chain code uh, when all other organization members are agree with that. So, And then when you change the chain code, you have to upgrade the chain code. And uh, that's not really efficient to do that. And for that, we can use a little bit uh, a shorter way. So there is a um, dev mode um, in the beer. And uh, in previous sessions, I have shown in several examples how you can create this dev mode. And we use this dev mode scenario also here. So, so we need a development network that we can uh, easily try and test our chain code before we will uh, roll out this to the real test network or canary test network, whatever you have to test it. And then, of course, we need uh, and we need these uh, identities. So we have to register and enroll identities with this uh, particular attributes we need. So this is a part how we can do this. And then we have to write the chain code, or we have to inspect this chain code. And uh, this is also a good example. So you see uh, in this, you will see a simple chain code uh, with a set method and the get uh, method. And uh, then you see also the, the, the anatomy of, of a chain code. So what is needed uh, from the Node.js perspective to create a chain code. And uh, that's a you can say it's a template, uh, or you can see it as a template, and then you can uh, write your lo logic and your methods inside of this template. So, and then, okay, we have to test it. And in this, this test network is uh, called here the beer chain code, the dev environment. Uh, yeah, and we can test it with different identities here. So a short overview of the environment, what we need. So 
we need um, this uh, peer chain code dev environment. So this is something uh, that we started here. And uh, when we started the beer, then we can uh, use this uh, option. And uh, then we have the possibility, possibility to, to, to start the chain code in a separate step. And then you can stop uh, the chain code container uh, and start it again, stop and st start it again. And every time you make a change to your chain code, then you can start a chain code container again and, could, and you can immediately test your your change in the source code and in this scenario we have four uh, docker containers so um, because we need the identities so we need the certified authority so the fabric ca container and we need this for we need this not really for the orderer but we need the orderer and we need here the for the organization one the certified authority so this is the fabric ca version that we are going to uh, we register and enroll some identities, and then we need the beer uh, to test our uh, scenario. And we use a simple uh, asset chain code, so where we can store and read uh, product data with some uh, attributes here. So, but this is uh, not really important for the session. But important is that we use a fabric CA. So. And uh, because we want to create new identities, and that's the reason why we have to use this uh, favorite series, CAs. So, okay, so from the Fabric Contract API, we have here some methods, um, which I will briefly give you an over, overview of that. So, and I think it's not really difficult to, to do that and to understand. So you find this also in the documentation. And uh, the only thing what we need is we need this client identity instance. So we have to create it. And with this uh, client identity instance, we can get some information from the certificate from the current transaction, uh, which is uh, going uh, to call the chain code for the moment. So. We have here a method, method that's called get MSP ID. So, and the methods does exactly that, um, what's the name like. So it gives us a text string back with the name of the membership service provider ID. And with this string, you can make a decision. You can say, okay, only the organization one can do something and then you can make here a condition and that's it. So yeah, so, so you can read out the membership service provider ID. And then a little bit more information uh, will, will you receive when you use the get ID method. So and with this get ID method, you receive a string in a specific format. And uh, this is a little bit, uh, yeah, so you can see here this format. So we have an X509 in as a, as a prefix here and then we have here two blocks, a block for the subject um, and the block for the issuer with some attributes. And uh, we can uh, pass this to um, a string object or a JSON object, for example, and then we can use this uh, to make uh, decisions based on the attributes from this certificate. So, and these are the both methods where we can get some information from the uh, Fabric contract API uh, with these two methods here. And, but we can also get one specific attribute. So there's another method with get attribute value and we can here uh, grab a value directly. So we can say the value semlinux.writer. Uh, we, we want to receive this value then we can use this method get attribute value and we can also use a function it's called asset asset attribute value and uh, this value should be true and if this is has the value true so this is not a boolean value here this is also only a text value so and when this uh, property has this value then uh, you will have uh, the result is here true or false 
And these three elements you have to control uh, the information from your client identity, and then you can make decisions on that. Um, yeah, so we need identities. And uh, to register and enroll uh, identities from the Fabric CA, uh, this is a two-step process. And uh, here it's important to know you have always to register first. So we can here, the, we use here in this example, the Fabric, the CLI version of this um of this of the interaction with the favorite CA. in the next session i have planned to do this with the node.js sdk so then we will see how we can do this also with the node.js sdk but here but in this session we do it uh, from the command line interface but the general as uh, approach here is you can you have to register first and then you can enroll an identity and uh Fabric CI, this Fabric CI client command uh, register gives us the possibility to do that. And uh, we have here some attributes. Uh, so, okay, we need the name. So it's clear that's the name of the identity. And then we have, we can define a secret. So the secret here is important only for the second step for the enrollment. Then we need a uh, type. So the type, is uh, here a client uh, because also other um, elements in the fabric network like a beer or a order um, need some um, certificates uh, need some identities but they will have other types so they will have the type order or they will have the type beer for example and uh, these kind of certificates need the type client here and then we have here this um, ID attributes, address uh, attribute, and then we can here define uh, attribute. So in this in this manner, so some Linux dot writer uh, is to equals, equals to true, and then here this is suffix e serve. And this is something I will tackle a little bit later. So because we can uh, take this e cert suffix, uh, but we can leave it as well. But when we leave this, then we have uh, to make a second step uh, in the enrollment process. Uh, but when you have here in this example, uh, we have here this ECF uh, suffix. And in this example, we use TLS. So, so we have here this TLS certificate. And then when you enroll this, then you can also use the fabric client CA client command with the enroll option here. And then you have here this, this syntax. So you have the, the writer uh, and you have to write a password here, the secret. Uh, and then this is the host uh, from the Fabric CA uh, and some attributes. And yeah, so this is, I think, uh, clear what, what is here, uh, what, is, what's what is here uh, happened. And uh, the only important part here is uh, I think that we have here this is ID attributes uh, option field and here this e cert. So, but this I will show you this a little bit later when we try this. But um, so we can re register, we can enroll with the command here. And of course, we can remove an attribute, yeah, so we can modify this identity. And uh, so when we say, okay, we want uh, the, this reader uh, to change the true attribute, we want to remove it, then we have to uh, use the same attribute here uh, without any value in this position. And this will lead to the effect that the uh, client uh, command here will remove this attribute from the attribute list. And you can also modify it. And you see here the example for the modifying. So uh, we can have here uh, one value and two value. And you see here when you have more than one, when you have more than one um, attributes here, then you have to write it in uh, under quotes. So in this format. So because that's I think that's will really symbolize and um, string away here. And yeah, so 
this is the modification. Yeah. And so when this is something really important to know, so when we everything what we do here when we when we something register, then this is registered in the Fabric CI server. Then the next step is to enroll this certificate. And then if it's enrolled with this M option here, then here is the the the, uh, the, the home folder, for example, the home folder, the membership service provider, home folder for this writer identity. And then uh, you will have this certificate. When you, uh, when you modify this, then here, then this is modified only in the server, not in your client. So that's really important to know that when you set here an attribute with a an value and uh, you gave this uh, identity to a third party, for example, then um, it's not enough that you change this uh, attribute here yeah, and reduce maybe the permissions, and uh, but the, the third party user can use already the old certificate. So he has also to replace it. Yeah? And we have to uh, enroll it or re-enroll this identity, and then we have to replace it. So, you know, because this type of certificates are static, and when uh, there is no check, in the um, when the chain code is checking this certificate, and then it's all only uh, checked if the certificate is valid. So is it uh, uh, in time, or uh, is, it, is it a valid certificate which belongs to this organization? And uh, when you change your property, then uh, in the Fabric CA server, then uh, the old certificate is uh, already valid and uh, you have to replace it by yourself. Otherwise, your new ident your new attribute here will not work in the chain code. So that's important to know, and I think it could be a little bit difficult uh, to handle this situation. So, but there are maybe some ways to handle that because we have different kind of client wallets. So maybe we can handle this with client wallets. So in the next session, we will see this from the um from the from the node.js perspective these commands and when we uh, interact with the network we need an identity and this identity need a local wallet and we have different wallets so we have also a database wallet uh, or we can have an in-memory wallet so maybe we can make a workaround uh, with this kind of wallets but yeah it's a, i think it's a little bit difficult here okay but but the important part here to take from this slide here is that you always have to register a, cl a client or identity, and in the second step, you can enroll this client you know, with the secret, with the password here. And, and that's the, this, the process. Okay, and then, okay, uh, this certificate, uh, this sign certificates, you can find this sign sign certs here on this path. So when you when you look to your um, to your certificates folder and uh, the structure is always the same. So we have organizations, we have then beer organizations, then we have here the name of the beer organizations. And here we have a folder users with all users from this set uh, from this organization from this organization. And uh, then we have here a folder with the uh, specific user. And in this MSP folder, uh, we have a signed cert folder, and there is a so called signed uh, cert PAM file. And uh, this is the signing certificate, what we need. And uh, when you make a cut on this file, you will see uh, nothing uh, useful. So you have to decode this signed cert, uh, and uh, you can use this command here, yeah, and then. Uh, you can uh, look what is inside of this signed certificate. But for our example, we need only this line here. So in this signed cert, there is a lot of information um, and uh, we need only uh, a small part of this information. And uh, you will find here an, a string with these numbers here and then you, have, you find your attrib attributes uh, and then you will see here 
your uh, attributes. So, and this is the part we are looking for in the uh, sign set. So, and with this command here, you can uh, inspect this sign set and see what is inside of the sign set. And that's very useful when you look inside your certificates and see what is in this signing chart. And so in this way, you can learn a little bit more what's going on. Okay, so that's the theory. Um, yeah, and then challenge of today. So this will be then in the, on the end. So now, and now I will show you how you can, how we can do this. So, okay. Um, this is, I use my setup. So my setup, this is an Ubuntu 20 machine. And uh, for this examples, I use uh, uh, really often Schmacks as a terminal multiplexer. And, uh, And if you use this, then you have the possibility to have different uh, windows uh, in one uh, SSH terminal. And the cool thing here is that you can uh, attach to the session and you can detach to the session. And uh, for those uh, which are not familiar uh, with, with HMAX terminal or with other terminal multiplex systems, so that's really uh, helpful So because we can uh, run here tasks for it, for example, this each top. Uh, and then, so you can detach from the session and you can also close the SSH uh, connection. And, uh, but in the background, this process is still running. And when you come back, then you see this process here uh, is always still alive and it's running. So. So, and this is really cool uh, that you can define some uh, panels here and you can make your setup. And for this uh, demo setup, so we need at least uh, three terminals. So we need here a terminal, a terminal to run the network. And the second terminal here, uh, we can start and stop the chain code container. So when we do a change on that, then we can, uh, stop it and start it again. And then we can immediately see uh, if our change is working or not. And it's also useful for your debugging. So in this example, uh, or in today's exam example, we will, uh, I will print you out some information so from this ID and you see if this user has this attribute or not. And then, so you can really good uh, work with, uh, with this. And so we need this, uh, uh, this is in the second panel. And then the third panel here, so we need a, a panel to, um, uh, to create our identities and to call our functions. So this is our working panel, if you want. You can run this also in the background and you can do it also with one uh, terminal, of, of course. I think that will work, but it's really useful to see what happens, so. and. Uh, that's the reason why we have here this three uh, panels. Okay, so the first step is uh, to start this development network. This is the documentation here. Yeah? This is in the GitHub repo. So I hope that's uh, large enough that you can uh, see this a little bit uh, on your screen. And uh, this is, maybe you can see a step-by-step -step guide. So when you follow these instructions, then you must be able to uh, reproduce this example. So the only thing here is that we need, we need this development network. So because this is a work from a previous session and uh, with this development network, we can, um, this is, I think a copy. I, and I, did the, I, make, I did the copy from the test, official test network script and I have modified this a little bit so that we have only one organization and that this one organization has one peer and this peer is started in this peer dev mode. And the advantage of that is uh, that we can use this dev network with uh, LevelDB. This is the default configuration. So when we want to try something with LevelDB, so 
uh, composite keys or something like that, um, or a simple normal uh, blockchain uh, system. But when we use when we are when we you try to use CouchDB, then we can do it as well because in the network script in the fabric. Uh, official network script, this start, start script, is also an option S, um, or an option for the, for the CouchDB, uh, um, for CouchDB, and then you can start this dev network also with CouchDB. And then you can do everything what you can test with your uh, CouchDB. Uh, when, you, when you want to try a different indexes, or I want to make some rich queries, above, and to, to query the world state in a, in a different way. And uh, more important for today is that we have the, this, uh, this CA option here. And with the CA option, uh, that means that the whole network starts with fabric CAs. So that means that it starts with an order with a fabric CA order and with the order itself and with a fabric CA uh, for the organization one and with one peer of the organization one. And all the crypto material is also created in this process. So is that, and that is the starting point for us. So when we start this here and then this network will start. So this is something you have to do uh, as a preparation to this uh, session. And uh, how you can do that, that is in one of the, uh, we did this in one of the previous sessions and you can find uh, two versions of them. You can use uh, the Docker version, like in my case here, and when you say here Docker PS, then you see here this, uh, that we have this setup now up and running. And you see here, we have here an, uh, a peer organization, PS0, and here this CR of organization one, and also here for the order. So, yeah. Okay, so that's the first step here. And uh, the second step is that we need these identities. So, and these identities, we have to enroll it, but we can skip this. Uh, uh, we can skip this, this, uh, this uh, step, um, and we can uh, this also. So let us start the chain code. So um, the chain code. I will walk through the chain code here. Um, this must be here. So and. When you write the chain code in Node.js, this is, I think it's pretty easy to do that. So if you're familiar with Node.js, then I think it's really easy. And also when you're familiar with the Golang, then it's also easy to do that. So it depends really on your background. So it's not really complicated to write um, these uh, chain codes, uh, but you have to know a little bit how you can do it. Uh, and for the Node.js, um, is, it, is it that we need a folder here? This chain code is called CS04. And then we need an index GS file. And then in, in this index GS file, we have to export uh, contracts. And we have, we can, but this contracts export is an array. So that gives us the possibility to export one contract here in this chain code. Uh, but we can, but this is in a way, so we can have here different contracts. So, and we can export here different contracts uh, with one chain code. So you can say, this is a chain code, and this chain code can contain different contracts, one or 10, for example, yeah? whatever you want here. And this is the way here. So, and you include this here with the required command, and then you export here in an array. And this is, in this case, the only value, uh, the only object here, uh, what you, uh, and the only contract here, what you are going to uh, ex so export here. And then you need the package JSON file. So the package, the package 
uh, backup JSON file is important because we need these two dependencies. So we need this favorite contract API, of course, and we, we need this favorite shim uh, package here. So the favorite shim is, I say it's the old one. Uh, it's a more low level legal possibility to develop chain codes. And the favorite contract API is the new one. So, okay. And uh, I have this also later here in, the in, in, my, in my chain code uh, descriptor. But we need this favorite shim. We, for the chain code, we don't need the favorite shim. So, uh, we need only elements from the favorite contract API. But when you we have to start the chain code. And uh, to start this chain code, we need, and that's an important part here, uh, we need this in the scripts here, in the scripts attribute here, this is an object, and here we have a value start, and here we need this command, favorite, contra favorite chain code node start. And this command here will come when you install the favorite trim npm package. And that's the reason why we need the favorite scheme here. So in the Fabric contract API, uh, we, we use uh, a lot of Fabric uh, scheme um, commands and, and elements uh, because they have included that uh, for backward compatibility. And uh, you can work and you are pretty fine when you work with this Fabric contract API alone. But to start, you need uh, this uh, program here, and this will come when you install the favorite shim. So, and that's the reason why we need this here as a dependency. Yeah, so and when you start with the development, so then you have to create this package JSON file and call the npm install command, and then uh, these two packages will be installed. And then you have to uh, extend this package file with this command here. Uh, this is not needed for the development scenario here, so it's not needed for that, but this is needed for the challenge of the day. So when you try to install this, uh, okay, so um, yeah, that's that. And that's the chain code. Let's have a look to this chain code. So I will make this a little bit larger. So, and this is, let me close this and then I will walk through this. So, okay. So what is important here? So in the index.js file, uh, we have here this require and then we have here an export. So we export here this class, this CS, CS04 contract class. So uh, this is the link between this file and the index.js file, which we have seen previously. And then we need here, uh, yeah, oh, for the favorite trim, we need this, sorry. Yeah, this is something I have missed. Uh, we need, uh, for the client identity, we need the favorite trim. So, but we need also that for the, uh, for, the, for the start command. And so a contract is, um, based on a an, on an, on an contract, uh, on the contract class. This contract class came from the favorite contract API, and uh, we call it CS04 contract. So that's our name. And then we have here a constructor for that. So the constructor is, constructor is uh, important uh, because when we call this here, we gave this uh, class a namespace, a name. So yeah, and with this name, we can also when we call it over the command line interface, so we can have a, a, a short uh, namespace. So we can say, okay, this is the contract C04, and from this contract, we want a function XY, for example. Yeah. So, uh, and that's, I think it's a good way that uh, you exp uh, that you call here uh, the name um, in, for, for this function, for this class. And then here, we can define some properties uh, um, for this, uh, for this, for this contract. So, but this is uh, depends on you, on your programming style, and what, however you want to do this. And here, uh, this commands here, it's uh, 
the node from uh, as, as I mentioned. So the chain code, this is the old version. The favorite scheme is the old version. And the favorite contact API um, is the newer version. So, yeah. And uh, when you read the documentation, you will see, you will read that uh, the favorite contract API is this descriptive as a higher level of uh, development and the favorite gym is a little bit low, is low level liga uh, than, yeah. But, um, I think uh, in, for the standard uh, case, you are fine with this favorite contract API. Okay, so this, that is the, the task of the constructor. So we need this here yeah, and to call this name and then uh, we have a name namespace for this contract. And then we have here three functions. And if these three functions are pretty cool, so we have here something is called before a transaction happened, then after a transaction happened, and for unknown transactions. So what does this mean? So when somebody uh, does a transaction, then uh, the first thing which is called here is the before transaction a function here. So, and here we can do different things. So uh, we can we can do logging. We can uh, get the transaction ID from this. Uh, we can, uh, in my case here, you see um, I call this client identity class and create uh, an instance of that, and then I get all the informations which I want. So, yeah. But that's that is an interesting part. So um, this is the, the the door when you say okay when you start this when you call this contract. And this is the first function which is called here. Okay. And the after transaction is called when the transaction is done. So this is the ideal place when you start an event. So when you uh, make a notification service and you want the uh, everything is fine and, and the transaction is done, then you can fire here an event and this is a good place to do that. So this function is automatically called when the transaction has finished. So this is the last function here and this is the first function here, which is called. And uh, unknown transaction is when you call a function uh, which is not uh, set in your chain code. So, and this is, uh, so you don't need to try catch uh, for this, uh, for, the, for your function names. So you, can, you have here a built-in try catch, so-called try catch. And with this unknown transaction, um, you can, yeah, you can uh, handle the situation. So like here in this, so uh, we have here this uh, CTX. So all of these functions has one parameter with this cont, cont uh, uh, with the CTX property, and this has this stub object here, and this stub object uh, gives us functionality also from the favorite stream. And here is a function, get function and parameters, and then you can here, uh, this is an object, and then you can here give back the function uh, which the uh, invoker or the caller has called, and then you can throw here an, an error. So yeah, this is so so called try catch built in uh, in USA. But this you you can um, you can leave these three functions yeah, uh, away. So it's also fine. But uh, I think that's really good to know that these functions are available and you can work with that. And I think this way uh, I think that's very useful uh, for debugging and also for things like logging or um, uh, fetching identity information. And so on. Okay, so and then we have here our two functions. So we have a typical set function and we have a get function. And uh, this set function is uh, the task is to create and update uh, assets. So, yeah. and there's nothing, there's no magic behind. So here you can create a model, yeah, and then you can. Uh, with this, this, these are the two important commands here. So um, in Fabric, you have to store a key in the value. And the key is uh, 
your identifier. So you can have, this could be a string, this could be a number, this could be a composite key, whatever. Yeah? And the value uh, is a puffer. Yeah? Is here an asset puffer. So it's a binary information, it's a binary, it's a binary type. And uh, we have, the only thing what we have to do is we have to uh, stringify and create the binary data from our data model. So in this way, we can create a data model, whatever, a JSON structure, whatever you want, and you can convert this in a single binary uh, value. And then you have here this asset va binary value, and then you can use this put state uh, function here, and you can say, okay, this key, yeah, this model key yeah, uh, has this value. And that's it. So, and this is how these two lines store your data in a favorite blockchain. So it's pretty easy. And uh, yeah, um, and here we see uh, how we can use this asset at root value. And this is a simple if uh, construct. So we check if this. Um, if the, the client identity has the some Linux write identity with, with the value true, and uh, if not, then we uh, stop here and we return here uh, value, uh, personalized, personalized value from our side. And this is mere, uh, a stop condition here. So, and if not, if the attribute here is set, then we create here a data model. So that's also easy and straightforward. Um, yeah, it's a simple function where you can create this your data model yeah, here. And you pass the data. Yeah. And this is a way, this is one way uh, how you can do that and you can make it in different ways, whatever you want. So that's not here specific to this scenario. Okay, and then you can return the key yeah, from this uh, create process. And in my case, I have here a try and catch block, a try catch. So we can also here throw an error uh, when there is a problem with this uh, transaction. But here is the first usage of this uh, asset attribute value. So we can check this here. Yeah? And in the get function, um, it's the same. So, but here, um, I have here a has attribute. Uh, so, um, the get is also simple. So let's look first on that. So this is also really the, the contract, uh, the con contract stop here. And there's a function get state and we need only the key. So, uh, and the key is delivered here in this function as the first parameter. And, uh, yeah, and that's it. And then you receive the binary data, and then you can here uh, convert this binary data to a UTF-8 uh, string, and that is your result. So this is also uh, straightforward and uh, not really difficult here. And that is the typical way how you can read the value of a given key from a standard key uh, and read it from the world state. So this is only the world state, not your history. Uh, or history versions of uh, this key. And the more interesting part is here. So in our scenario, we have uh, the reader. The reader um, should read this attributes. Uh, the writer should obviously also read uh, uh, his, 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 his work. And then I have here a special role, the auditor. So because uh, we have uh, another identity, so we can uh, practice this a little bit and then we can add another identity. So we have here three identities, and only these three identities uh, are allowed to read this data. And um, unfortunately, uh, there is no function for that. So I have looked in the Go uh, SDK, and in the Go SDK, there is in indeed uh, a function which uh, checks for has attributes. So, uh, but that's not, uh, I haven't seen that this is implemented in the Node.js SDK. But it's not, not a problem. So we can do it by our own. And uh, 
this is a simple for loop over the attributes here. And uh, we check each of the attributes if this attribute is uh, available here. So, and this is also the get attribute value. And we check if this has the value true. And with the simple loop, we can uh, check if the uh, certificate has one of these allowed attributes. And if yes, we can set the status to true and break the loop. I'll stop the loop and then we can uh, return the status with true or false in this way. So, but this is also one approach how you can do that. So, and you can do it in Node.js in different ways. But the important part here is that you use this line here yeah, to check it. So, with this uh, get attribute value, yeah, we can check if this is the value true. And in this way, we can check this. So, okay. So, yeah, and then the status is true here, then uh, everything is okay. And we can read the data and uh, give and return the data. And if the status here is, has the value of false, then we return also a custom uh, error message. Error, you are not allowed to read an asset. Okay, whatever you want here. Yeah. Okay, so, and this is how you can uh, check these attributes. But you can read a little bit more uh, from this. So, and this is what we can see here in the before transaction. And in the before transaction, I have also used these methods, which we have seen previously in the slides. So, with this, uh, get an MSP ID. So we will return a string, um, and the string will contain the name of the membership service provider ID, which the certificates belongs to. And with that, you can make also a decision, true or false or whatever. And um, that's a simple string. And uh, with the get ID, that's a little bit complicated, more, compli com more complex. And uh, this is, as I have mentioned, we, would, we will receive a string in that format. So, yeah, and we have to manipulate or we have to split the string up by ourselves. And, uh, but this, this format is fixed, is fixed. And so we can write a function that splits that uh, up and uh, create an object here. And then we can print this object. And uh, this uh, split ID function is also very straightforward here. So this is the function. So as you can see, we can split this uh, with the uh, double quotes, uh, double dots here in the, uh, in the type. And we can have a type and we can have here a subject and we have here an issuer. So the subject is uh, belongs to the information to the client. Yeah, And the issuer is uh, has information regarding the issue from the certificate. So from the organization, from the certificate authority. So in our uh, example, so now we are focusing more on the subject. And uh, the subject itself uh, contains also um, some, uh, some, 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 some slashes, and then we can split it also up uh, that we can have a single uh, property with a single value. But that's also it's the same as I have mentioned. So this is one way how you can do it. So I'm sure uh, you have uh, more than one way to split this information up. And then you will have here, you can also make here, this is something which should not really done here in the chain code. So uh, we want to use it uh, more often. So that is something you are going, uh, it's better when you exclude that. And then you can uh, yeah, import it uh, with a require function, use it in different chain codes. Okay, so on oh, this asset exists, is in this example not needed. So this is uh, uh, from another example. I don't know, so we can, we can skip it. So, okay, and that's it. that is how the chain code is created. So let's wrap up this. Here, uh, I think the most takeaway here from this 
from the chain code here is uh, when you uh, start with this, is that you need an index.js file, and this index.js file has here an export, uh, and this and and this export need to uh, need an contract, and this contract is an array, and here you can export one or more um, different uh, contracts, and uh, that means that you have one chain code with different contracts, for example, here, or with one contract. Yeah? And in this contract, you have here a, a template. You can see this as a template. So you have to uh, extend uh, your class from the global contract class. The global, global contract class belongs to the favorite contract API here. So, and for the client identity, we need this favorite trim package here in this for only for um, set and get and for key, composite keys or for history, whatever. You don't, I don't think you need this uh, favorite trim package here, yeah? but it's a normal include here. And then you have here this class, and this class, I think it needs, uh, yeah, it's good when you have a constructor here, yeah, because. It's important to have this name because this is the name of the chain code, and then we can use this um, as a namespace because it could, in this way, it will be possible that you have uh, more contracts, that you have two contracts, and both contracts will have a get function. So then, when you don't use a contract name, for example, then which function should be called? So and that's the reason why it's important to set here a name because this name is also part of the address when you call the function from the client head or for the command line interface. So that's the reason why this is here so important. And then the next part is uh, these three functions. These are also uh, as an option. You can see it as an option, but uh, I think it's really, really useful. So because we have a fixed starting point in our chain code where we can do logging, we can measure time, whatever you want here. Yeah. And uh, in our scenario, we grab, uh, we fetch some client data. So the important part is that uh, this function is the first function which will be called when this contract is uh, uh, executed. And the after transaction is the last one. So this is typically uh, the place where you can fire an event. So uh, you can make an, an, an chain code event and the client can listen on this event and yeah, then you can do uh, something with the information. Yeah. And um, then the unknown transaction, this is a good point uh, to catch some uh, wrong inputs. So when somebody is calling a function which is not here in this, uh, uh, in your chain code, and then uh, this is here uh, fired and you can throw an error. So there is no need, like you have seen maybe in older uh, chain code versions where we are in an in init function and then this where in, 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 uh, in starting function where you have a switch condition where in the switch when you have case one, two, three, four, and then you have uh, uh, a central uh, um, else function where the, the, the where you can catch uh, the function which are not existing. So that is not needed here. And uh, you can use this unknown transaction built-in function here. But you can leave this and your chain code will also work. So that's not a must to use it. And then you can have your set yeah, and your get function, yeah, as you have seen. And uh, yeah. And the important part to get to the identity is you create a new instance of this client identity. So, and you have to use always this uh, context and this stop object, and then you receive this information. And uh, with this object, you can have um, different functions. You can have this get membership service provider ID, and also this with this get ID, more information about this. Uh, certificate, and then you can call the get attribute value function um to get some information from your attributes, and then you can handle this. 
Okay, so this is uh, uh, the anatomy of uh, this chain code of every chain code. Uh, so you can you can take this ex example and build your own setup uh, with that. And uh, yeah, so okay. And now let's try try this out. Let's let. Ooh. So I think uh, we are in trouble in time trouble <laughs> um yeah okay so um now let's start our chain code so to start the chain code we can use here this setup so i will show you this a little bit in detail so we have here a normal setup here and with an organization and we have here in this dev network a chain code folder and in this chain code folder, we can divide between Node.js and Golang. Yeah? So we can switch between them if you want. And then we have here our uh, CS4 uh, folder. Yeah. And in this folder, uh, we have um, the package JSON file. Yeah, Don't forget this. And uh, then we have to call npm install. And then the Node modules will be installed. So, and that's it. And then with this index on this CS04 file, we are ready to start the chain code. And to start the chain code in this dev mode, uh, we need a command line here. So, and this is this one. So we need, we have to set two environment variables here, uh, or three, so three. So we, we have this is core chain code log level to debug. So then we see a little bit more information. Then we have to disable the TLS. And we have to give the chain, uh, core chain code ID name, yeah, a standard name, my uh, chain code uh, 01. So yeah, we can leave this always the same. And then here you see it, yeah, when we need this note under the node models uh, in the pin folder, favorite chain code node start. And this will come when you install the NPM shim package. So that's the reason why we need this here. Yeah. And that's it. So, and then we copy that in here. And then you see the chain code is one. Okay. And uh, since we use the, this network is a, um, a reduced version of the network, uh, network script, then for the network script, we have to set some environment variables. So I have modified. Uh, also, this environment variables to uh, fit this setup here, and uh, we have here a file this org one, um, yeah, and here I have the uh, a function set globals, and here we have this uh, for uh, for environment variables which we need, and this core beer MSP config path is the path which we. I did is the variable which we have to um, change when we try to test with different uh, users here because all our users belongs to the Fabric CA from this organization and the P address is the same. The config uh, path uh, to the Fabric config is also the same. So, yeah. And this is the environment variable we have to change later. So, okay. And then Okay, so let us and then execute this sub globals. So, and uh, now here we have to we have the invoke command. So now we are the user admin. We are the admin user here. So yeah, and as you have seen, the admin user doesn't have any right to to read everything or to do anything. So, and that means that when everything is ready uh, and work fine, then we can try to invoke here uh, an asset and uh, we should receive an error. Yeah, and you see here, you receive this key error, you're not allowed to create or update an asset. And here in your debug values, 
you see a little bit more. So you see here uh, the transaction ID. Then we see here the information from the membership service provider ID, so organization one. And then we say here the information from the uh, certificate, from the get ID function. So and this is the result. And then we have here the uh, check for the attributes. And you see so this, so this identity doesn't have uh, the writer, the reader, order, or the auditor uh, flag here. And that's the reason why we have here in the result an error. Yeah. So not on, so also the administrator of this favorite network cannot change this uh, asset. So and that's important to know. Yeah. Okay. And now we need some identities. So let us grab some identities. So, okay, um, we go back to this here. So, we use the identities uh, with proper attributes. So, and um, for that, we have to define um, one environment variable. So, the Fabric CA client has to know where the uh, home directory is from this uh, organization. Uh, and we export this here. You can check the result here. You see here, this is our path. And you see when you check it with three uh, L1 organizations, the organizations of one. Users. So, huh? and you see here, you have only these two identities here, these two user identities. And this is because that's the default user. So, when you use the default network, then you have always the admin user and you have always a user one uh, for installed. Okay. And now uh, let's try to register, register here the first user. So, and here is really important that you have these two steps. The first step is you have to register something and then you can enroll it. So that's the second step. And uh, yeah, and the attribute here is the same Linux writer is like true with this ESERT suffix. So, okay, let us copy this. And, and here we receive the password. Yeah, this is the secret. So, and we need this secret, but it's the same secret uh, like here. And we need this secret uh, for the second step. So, in 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 the in the third uh, way, we don't need a secret here. So that's only the secret uh, to uh, enroll enroll this this certificate. Okay. Um, ah, done. Uh, oops. So. Okay, so okay, let's do the same with the reader. When you check your folder, you see there is no information. So all this now lives only in the Fabric CA server and not here in your client on your client side. And on the client side, it will come when you enroll this in the second step. So, and then we can, we, we, should, we will enroll the writer and we will enroll, enroll the reader. And um, the credentials are here. So this is the first is the username, then is this, uh, uh, and then uh, you have the, the password here. Okay? And then here, this is the, the host. No? This is the IP local host and depart from the Felix CA. So, so this is the important part here. Then we can enroll it. And now you see we have here a writer certificate, a writer folder. Yeah. And the same we are going to do with the reader. And you have here also the reader. 
Um, one important point is, so we have to copy uh, this config YAML file here with this uh, information about the node organization units configuration here. Yeah. So uh, this uh, must be done by hand. And we have we can take this from the um, here from from the V organization one membership service provider file here. Here the file is located here, and we can copy this here into this uh, config folder. Okay, so we copy this. And we need the second, uh, the same file also for the reader here. Yeah. So, all right. And now, okay, so this is the, the part we have seen already. So and when you go into uh, the reader, and you see here the MSP file, here, so the config file, and you hear, and then you will hear the sound set as well. So, okay, now we have two users, one with a, with a role for the writer and one for the reader. Okay, so one short word to this is e uh, set. So this is suffix. So um, that means so when we use this uh, here in the in, in the re register process, yeah, when we have this uh, e set suffix here, then we don't have then when we enroll uh, this uh, identity, uh, this attribute will be enrolled uh, will be included. And when you don't have this, when you don't use this here, then this uh, attribute is set in the Ferrix CA server, uh, but it will not uh, automatically enroll. So you have to do it by hand. And uh, this is done here with the manager example here. So um, we, can, we can register here the manager. So here, without this suffix, And uh, when we when we enroll this manager without uh, these uh, enrollment attributes here, so um, I hope we have uh, already internet connection. So we have the manager here. We have the manager. MSP in the sunset. So, okay, and uh, let's have a look into this certificate. And you see here, this is the certificate when you inspect it. Yeah, you see here a lot of information about the uh, issuer, about the validity, uh, how long is the subject information and so on. Yeah. And here is this part here. Yeah. And you see here, there is no information about this some Linux writer attribute. Yeah. And uh, that's, that is because uh, we don't use the suffix here. And uh, when we want this, then we have to, we have to use this enrollment attribute here. And then we can say which um, identities, which attributes we want to include in this certificate. Okay. So I can re-enroll this certificate now. And when we look at that, and then you see here, some Linux manager is true. Okay. So, and that's the secret for the uh, e-cert suffix here.
Yeah. So that means when you uh, when you set this. here in the register process, then you can enroll it, enroll the identity, and this uh, attribute will be included automatically. But when you don't use it, then it will not be included automatically. So then you have to name it. Yeah? And you can do that uh, with this en enrollment attributes uh, option here. And you have to write this uh with a comma uh comma separated form here so here these are the attributes which are going to include yeah. and here is the the command to check yeah, your uh to decode this sign cells okay so and now let's change to a um writer so and to change to the writer uh, we have to change this uh, membership uh, config path. Uh, and this is um, in, this comes from environment variable, core peer membership config path. And then here we have to set the path to the writer. Yeah. So copy that. And then we can try it again. So uh, we invoke the chain code. And you see. Successful status payload key A1. And you see here, Sam Linux writer, true, reader, false, auditor, zero. And when you come to the um, reader, then you can change this to the reader. So this is a short message. Okay, so, and then let's read it. Oh, well, you are not allowed to read this. So let's see, we are the reader. Ah, the create. Okay, uh, of course, that's correct. So um, I have to be a little bit more focused. Uh, so we have tried the invoke function and we are a reader now. So uh, this should not work and we are right. So error, you're not allowed to update this. So, uh, but when I call this uh, reader function, then you can read it. With the check tool, you see it a little bit uh, nicer. And you see here, here's the package. Okay. so. I think my time limit, uh, I will run out of time. So um, here I have uh, some modify, uh, some further examples. Uh, so how you can modify and remove these attributes. So this is something you maybe want to try out uh, by yourself. And uh, yeah, so I think this, this was the example. And uh, let me come back now to the challenge uh, for you. And then we can make a short uh, Q&A session. Okay, so, and the challenge of the day. So I think that's when you want to play with them, then you can try, you can, you can load this chain code, this uh, from, the, um, from the GitHub repo. And then you can try to install uh, this chain code in the official test network. So, and uh, this is something, this would be the next step in our, in this process. So now we have developed this um, chain code and we have tested this chain code. And uh, the next step would be install it in a near real network. So in a network with two or more organizations to see how this is, how this goes. And uh, this could be done with the official test network. And uh, I think it's a two or one liner. So when you uh, know the network script and with this, you can, ins you can install the system uh, and you can install also 
uh, some chain code, and you can install also the Node.js chain code. And uh, if you want, try it out and give me a feedback if you uh, have problems with that or you can do it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, thanks for watching uh, this crowdcast session. Uh, I hope there is something useful for you. Uh, or there was something useful for you in the session. And uh, yeah, so let's see um, if you have any questions. I will click the out. No question here. No question from the audience yet. So, okay. So is there any question out there? So, okay, so if no questions, so it's because, uh, yeah, so, okay, if you don't have any questions, uh, then I would, I say thank you for your time. And um, I hope we see us again in the next, uh, in the upcoming weeks. And uh, stay safe and uh, we see you soon. Bye-bye.